All praises are due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the gifts that He has gifted us with during the month of Ramadan. But before that, the gift of faith. The gift of faith which cushions us in times of calamity, when calamity befalls us, or when we fall ourselves, we find Iman there to give us that support. Alhamdulillah, it is indeed the most precious ni'mah, the ni'mah of Iman. The second ni'mah is the ni'mah of Ramadan with all its precious opportunities of the mercy and forgiveness and liberation from the hellfire. Alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran about those who get the liberation of the hellfire, something to reflect upon. In uh, Surah Al-Imran, Ayah number 185, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, كل نفس ذائقة الموت Every soul is tasting death, shall taste death. There is no mahrab. We cannot flee that. وَإِنَّمَا تُوَفَّوْنَ أُجُورَكُمْ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ Only on the day of judgment you will get your full reward. Then he subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us about the final abodes. He says, subhanahu wa ta'ala, فَمَنْ زُحْزِحَ عَنِ النَّارِ A person who is removed, who is spared away, زُحْزِحَ is a lot of effort. وَأُدْخِلَ الْجَنَّةَ And was granted entry into Jannah فَقَدْ فَازِ He or she is triumphant. This is the greatest gain. وَمَا الْحَيَاةُ الدُّنْيَا إِلَّا مَتَاعُ الْغُرُورِ Then he says, subhanahu wa ta'ala, this world is no more than the illusion of enjoyment. We think it is real, we think it's lasting, but the reality, subhanAllah, it is an illusion that disappears. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us strive for that which remains rather than that which rather than that which disappears. Amin ya Rabbil Alameen. Imagine the good ending of those who have made it until the end of Ramadan with faith and ihtisab. Faith and hoping in reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Those who have made it to the last 10 days of Ramadan, alhamdulillah. Then in an odd night or on a blessed day, they recite the Quran, the Quran in which was revealed, revealed in the month of Ramadan. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows for them to pass on. I don't say pass away, we say pass on. They have moved from one life to another. So this is a mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. However, the doors of mercy are not closed. They are open and there are many opportunities for us. I thought of a hadith that will match this introduction. Uh, Sayyiduna Jabir ibn Abdullah, radiallahu anhu, this is an authentic riwayah. He says that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ascended the limbar once. فَلَمَّا رَقَدْ دَرَجَةَ الْأُولَىٰ And you all are aware of this hadith. قَالَ آمِينَ When he got into the first step, صلى الله عليه وآله وصحبه وسلم, he said, آمين, O Allah, accept. This is a dua. Then he ascended to the second. Then he said, آمين. Then to the third. Then he said, آمين, صلى الله عليه وسلم. Then they said, فَقَالُوا Now they're curious. أَرَادُوا أَيَّ تَعَلَّمَ مِنْهُ صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم. They said, Ya Rasulullah, سَمِعْنَاكَ تَقُولُ آمِينَ You know, they say, مِفْتَاحُ الْعِلْمِ السُّؤَالِ The key to knowledge is questioning, asking, asking questions. So they said, we heard you say آمِينَ three times, صلى الله عليه وسلم. Then he answered them, بِرَحَابَةِ صَدْرِهِ With his great manners, صلى الله عليه وسلم. He said to them, when I ascended the first step, then Jibreel, Atani Jibreel, Ja'ani Jibreel Ufaqan, Jibreel alayhi salam came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he said, Shaqiya abdun adraka ramadana fan salakha minhu wa lam yukfar lahu. The expression is really amazing. He said, Jibreel alayhi salam made a dua, he said, Maiza is he or she, such a loser. This is the biggest loser in reality. A person who attained, had the opportunity to reach the month of Ramadan and then the term فَنْسَلَخَ فَنْسَلَخَ like skimmed off him, like with difficulty, you had so many opportunities, it didn't just pass quickly without us being aware of it. He said that person who had this opportunity and did not get his or her sins forgiven, this is a miser, this is a loser. And then the Prophet he said, I said, I mean. And then I paused here, I said, Man ittai wa man al-mu'ammin. Who is the one making dua? And who is the one saying, I mean? Jibreel, alayhi salatu wa salam. 
ذي قوة عند ذي العرش مكين and the one who say amin سيدنا رسول الله خاتم النبيين المرسلين صلى الله عليه وسلم then the second one which is related to my introduction ثم قال then he said شقي عبد what a loser what a miser he or she is أدرك والديه أو أحدهما فلم يخيره الجنة that that person was able to witness and to live with his or her parents and that companionship of the parents did not grant him entry into Jannah. So قال آمين the Prophet ﷺ said yeah may it be may he or she be a loser and a miser of these all these all blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then the last one ثم قال جبريل عليه السلام afterwards said شقي عبد ذكرت عنده فلم يصلي عليه قال فقلت آمين جبريل عليه السلام said he or she is a miser a loser whom who hears your name mentioned Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he or she does not say salawat upon me does not say sallallahu alayhi wa sallam or any form of salawat of course and then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said Ameen as I said this is a hadith hasan sahih as Imam Sakhawi mentioned so may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from those who don't miss on these blessings Ramadan is over we don't know if we are going to attain the next Ramadan however we make an intention because إِنَّمَا الْأَعْمَالُ بِالنِّيَّةِ سُبْحَانَ اللَّهِ And inshallah, if the, if the niyyah is truthful, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will help us fulfill it. Ameen ya rabbal alayhi. Alright, the topic for today is five pieces of advice on how to maintain the blessings of the month of Ramadan. Maintaining those blessings of the month of Ramadan is the true win. Because let me give you an example. If we have really experienced special things in the month of Ramadan and we feel that they are transforming of our life into our betterment in all aspects, then we will make an effort to actually try to maintain those blessings of the month of Ramadan. What are the blessings of Ramadan which I'm talking about that we should maintain? Let's talk to the, about the verses in Surah Al-Baqarah where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the context of fasting. Fasting itself and the fasting of the month of Ramadan from Ayah 183 to Ayah 187. And look at the ending, the apparent signs, Allah, or the apparent objectives of fasting. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, In order for you to be self-disciplined, to be aware of Him, to have consciousness of Him subhanahu wa ta'ala. Fearing His displeasure subhanahu wa ta'ala and wanting to please Him subhanahu wa ta'ala. In order for you to fulfill the term of the fast, having gone through this training. Number three, to Allah, to magnify Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to, to prioritize Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that He comes first. Our salah in Ramadan is different, subhanahu wa There's more discipline, there's more presence, spiritual presence in our salahs. Number four, in order for you to be grateful that we have this. And the last one, to be close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is something we experience in the month of Ramadan. The second last one, in order for them to be guided. And the last ayah about fasting, subhanAllah. Thus Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shows his signs to people in order for them to be conscious. I thought of something that I can relate to. At work, we as teachers have to go through, and I'm sure other professionals as well, the first aid training, the first aid course. Now, some of us, you know, we all have to pass this at a certain standard, you get evaluated, you get some practice, not on real things, obviously. But after that, subhanAllah, the responsibility begins after we qualify. Hence, we cannot, like, you find that, you know, the principal or whoever is, you know, your superior at work will say, oh, you need to do a refresher. Because these things, if you don't practice them, that's it, they, they disappear from you. Now, Hence, we have the sunnah of fasting throughout the year. We want to start with these five pieces of advices. The first piece of advice after the month of Ramadan in order for us to maintain the blessings of the month of Ramadan. Check if we have any missed day of the month of Ramadan. For whatever reason, sickness, travel, any other reasons. If there is, 
or if they are, the first thing we need to do is to fast or to make up this fast. I thought of a hadith, subhanAllah, uh, where uh, the Prophet وسلم, it's a, a, a Sahih hadith that uh, Imam Bukhari and, and Muslim mentioned in different variations. Um, Sayyidina Ibn Abbas, radiallahu anhuna, he said, Ja'a rajulun ila al-Nabiyyi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. A man came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Faqala, ya Rasulullah. He said, O Messenger of Allah, inna ummi matat wa alayha sallamu shahri. Afa aqdi anha. He said, my mother passed on and she has, she has to fast or she has missed an entire month. Should I make it up for her, O Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Qala, na'am. He said, yes. قال فدين الله أحق أن يقضى. He said صلى الله عليه وسلم the debt of Allah سبحانه وتعالى is more deserving to be fulfilled. There's another riwayah also where they say a lady came to the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم and she asked him the same question and he said to her look at the logic look at the simplicity of explanation صلى الله عليه وسلم. He said أرأيت لو كان على أمك دين فقضيته he said, if your mother was owing somebody something, wouldn't you pay it off? She said, indeed, of course I'll do that. Then the Prophet said, كَذَلِكَ تُؤَدِّينَ عَنْهَا He said, just like you pay it off for someone who's owing, you do the same with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's the first thing. After making up the fast, then the second great opportunity, which is never to be missed, the six days of Shawwal. Because the Prophet says, as you all know, it's like fast. You fast the month of Ramadan, then you follow it up by six days of Shawwal. That's like fasting for the entire year, getting the reward of the entire year. After that, we have Mondays, Thursdays, the bright days, 13th, 14th, 15th of the lunar uh, uh, months. We have even the best days coming, the Afdalu Ayyam in Dunya, the days of Dul Hajj. We have the day of Arafah. So many days are coming. May Allah subhanahu wa help us to maintain regular fast. Amin ya Rabbil Alim. The second one is maintain our bond with the Quran. There's no doubt that in Ramadan, it is a different experience. Whether you recite the Quran, where you go somewhere for taraweeh, where mashallah the reciter has been blessed with a beautiful voice, beautiful ahkam of tajweed, that you know, get upset when you hear some things happening, some of us, you know, why in that field. You develop that connection. You want to read. Some verses hit you really. Different, like outside of, of Ramadan. Now, we need to, just like in Ramadan, we found time for the Quran. We can still find time for the Quran outside of the month of Ramadan. Some might say, look, I'm really weak in my recitation. Right? We'd say, the Prophet said, you get double reward. And then we say, if you want to even take it one step further, seek professionals or seek authorized people in the Quran to, to help you, to inspire you in the recitation and the memorization and understanding of the Quran. SubhanAllah. Then the third piece of advice is to keep the spirit of taraweeh in our lives, in our homes. The beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa as our mother Aisha mentioned, رضي الله عنها وعن أصحابه رسول الله أجمعين. Throughout the year, he had qiyam and he'll end with witr. sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And let me also uh, share with you a great piece of advice I got one of my teachers who's really, really, mashallah, strong in the memorization of Quran. He said, if you want to get it solid, you want to get your memorization or even inspire yourself to memorize aim to recite what you have memorized whether during the day or before aim to recite it during qiyamul layl or during tahajjud he said when you get up before fajr and you do tahajjud and you recite what you have memorized you will find that your memory brain really improves and to how you never know i remember meeting a teacher of i don't know if you remember brother Idris who was used to help me at this masjid years ago when i went to syria at that time he said, please go and visit my teacher. The teacher's name was Qusay Bati, the last name. So I went, he was a businessman. He had like a, his uh, shop in one of the main markets. Alhamdulillah, I spoke to him and I said, I, I read Surah Al-Fatiha to him. He said, please correct Surah Al-Fatiha for me. That's the first thing. And it took a long time. There were things that I needed to fix. Then he said to me, 
he started memorizing the Quran at the age of 14. And he, he finished after his 60s because his goal was to leave the business for the children and just, you know, the only thing to do is teach Quran in order to maintain the Quran that he has memorized. And at the time I met him, he was 84 years old. SubhanAllah. My own, there's a family member, in fact, my own uncle, also in Syria. It took him over 20 years. But at the end, at the end, he achieved that, SubhanAllah. You never know, tawfiq comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number four is, which is really, really important. Let us keep our charities alive after the month of Ramadan. Those whom we have been blessed to help in Ramadan. I say being blessed. Not to think that we are doing them a favor. They are doing us a favor. Right? Those who are, whom we have been blessed to help during the month of Ramadan need us throughout the year. Find a family. If we can find a family, whether overseas or here. There are poor families here as well. You know, we might think that everybody they're driving a nice car or something. There are those who are in need. Find a family, find a charitable project, find a student, find a well, dig a well somewhere, facilitate digging a well somewhere, right? Or any other means of goodness and try to maintain it. Keep it flowing after the month of Ramadan. And the last advice is find the company of those who are like-minded to inspire you to maintain what we have mentioned before. Whether it's a family member, yes, he is your brother, or she is your sister, or she is your spouse, he is your spouse, like husband and wife. A friend, a close friend, a cousin, whatever it is. If they're not like-minded, if there are obstacles in your life stopping you from achieving this, then you need to really assert yourself and make the decision and try to keep away while maintaining their rights. Not cut them off your life, no. But maintain your they write, bil ma'roof, with what is known to be good, but replace that company with the company that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran, ayah number 119 of Surah Al-Tawbah, where he says, subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ya ayyuhal ladina amanu, believers, oh you who have embraced faith, ittaqu Allah, be conscious of Allah, be aware of Allah, be cognizant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and after that, وَكُونُوا مَعَ الصَّادِقِينَ and be with the truthful. It's like taqwa requires good company. This what as well. Telling the Prophet which company to maintain. I'll end with the hadith, inshallah, where the Prophet was asked about the company that we should keep. The transmitter of the hadith, the Imam is Abu Ya'la rahimahullah ta'ala. And Ibn Abbas and Rabbi Allah Muhammad قال قيل يا رسول الله We really need to pay attention to this صلى الله عليه وسلم It was said to the Messenger of Allah عليه الصلاة والسلام أي جلسائنا خير Who are the best people to be in the company? Who are the people we need to hang out with? He said صلى الله عليه وسلم He gave three He said three He gave three descriptions or three qualities, or three prerequisites for those people. Number one, مَنْ ذَكَّرَكُمُ اللَّهَ رُؤِيَتُهُ He or she, and of course it's relevant, our sisters with their sisters, the brothers with the brothers. He said that when you see them, that as soon as you see them, you remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we need to think, even if it's our own family members, do, do they have this criteria? When we look in them, and us ourselves, are we really do we remind people of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Number two, Wazada fi ilmikum mantibuhu and his articulation, his or her speech increases your knowledge. Good knowledge, obviously. Unfortunately, we have again family members or friends who may teach us things that will harm us for life. On the other hand, we get a pious friend, a pious family member, a pious teacher who will teach you things that will go with you for life. And in the last one he says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, And his or her actions remind you of the hereafter. So number one, their appearance, and not just the appearance, obviously, we don't judge people, but if the appearance is good, Alhamdulillah, and we take the good from them. And number two is the, the speech, the, the topics you discuss, whether it's in person or on social media. Now we've been tested, may Allah 
protect us and protect our children. It's so easy to get into the wrong things through chatting. And I feel tempted to mention something, you know. It starts innocent. As somebody said, Nadratun, Daghamzatun, Tabdisatatun, Kamawaidun, Faliqa'u. It's not simple. A gaze or a look, and then a smile, right? And then a wink or some sort of gesture, and then a, a time, a date, and then the meeting happens. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us, choose carefully. And I'd like to end also with something that came to my attention and I want to relate it to this. Came from Brankton um, High, where they complained, in state school complained about some of the students who take advantage of them being sent for Jum'ah to Karabi Masjid. So they take their time and all the things that they would do. And I say to those brothers, say, look in Surah al Mubtahana, ayah number five, Rabbana la taj'alna fitnatan lilladina kafar. In the context of, of the father, I mean, in the context of the story of Ibrahim alayhi salam, Allah, don't make us a trial for the disbelievers. The enemies, don't make us, like, don't make them, oh, what kind of Islam these people are following. Then ayah number eight, because we cannot call them like this. I know why it's telling us about those who are kind to us, facilitate us coming to the masjid. What should we do with them? Excel in righteousness to them. And be fair to them. In Allah, Allah loves those who are fair and just. Is it fair to them to abuse the trust, especially doing something righteous? I mean, if you're doing something, you're wagging, that's a different story. But coming to the masjid is like a brother who takes a long time in his break. What are you doing, mate? I'm praying. What kind of at home do you take that long? No. Up and down, fix the ground, back to down. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. And I have personal done, a good opinion of my uh, brothers. But I'd say many. Uh, the husnul dhan, I mean the benefit of the doubt, I want to give you maybe it was Ramadan and you're tired and you look for any excuse to lose more time until Maghrib. But Ramadan is over, no excuses, right? So try to please reflect your beautiful religion in your behavior. I think I mentioned the quotation of Amir uh, Mumin Umar al Khattab, he said, Be callous to Allah quietly. He said, How is it through your actions? And if you cannot do that, if you can't be callous to Allah through our actions, then at least not be a cause of trial and doubt to others. Amin ya Rabbil Alameen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to maintain the month of Ramadan.